It all started with this picture. As soon as I saw that white strat, I wanted one. I think the guitar I gave the most with. It was my main guitar for a long, long time. Those were the very first three guitars I ever had. Harmony Acoustic. Gretsch Anniversary and Fender Strat. And that's the outside to this walk-up closet that I had where I was allowed to finally put up posters. So it was a fun little hangout to write tunes and look at pictures and find a quiet place to play. Well, this is my very first Fender Stratocaster. I got it in 1974. I wanted a white one after George did the concert for Bangladesh. So from 11 years old in 1971 to 74, I was really desiring this Strat. And um, when I got it, it was a cream color. It wasn't exactly white like his was, but then I realized it was under the lights of being on stage that his looked white and mine was cream. Over the years it turned many, many colors and um, just took on the colors of whatever clothes I was wearing. So I eventually stripped it and I made it all um, just back to the natural colored wood, which is what's still on the back. And I was just so thrilled to see that Beetle Sauce <laughs> Uh, did a, a video with George sitting there with his strat like this. I had never uh, seen that clip before and I learned a couple of things from it as well. Um, I didn't realize that all these years all of us had been so moved by the sound of a Gretsch guitar because of George <laughs> and he was unhappy with the sound but he was trying to get it to sound like a strat. And I also didn't know that he'd painted his guitar all psychedelic late one night because I had heard that Fender was reissuing the Rocky paint job guitar on a Strat and that it was going to cost something like five or seven thousand dollars and I just thought that's insane he did it himself any of us can do it <laughs> so in 2001 when he was really sick and dying I couldn't sleep and I was very upset and I just got up one night and decided even though I couldn't sleep and it was all late that I would paint my guitar as similar to his as I could. And so, instead of having the natural colored wood, uh, I went with a little bit of his design and then kind of did a little bit of my own because it was just fun. Um, I didn't name mine Rocky or anything, but uh, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun to do and it was at least something to do with that not able to sleep energy. I also made mine fretless. And then I raised the action to play slide, because I've also been playing slide since George started slide in 1969. So, um, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, it's great that he finally got a couple of strats. <laughs> I've got a couple myself, and I do want to show you some other pictures of Gretsch's and beetle type guitars and other things, so we'll do, do that. This is actually my most tangible of beetle pleasures. I had this uh, a number of years. The actual 62-63 reissue Paul Hoffner bass. And it's an awesome little bass for that great little bass sound when you want a Hoffner. Um, it's also now the rock band, Beatles rock band controller icon because it's so synonymous with Paul. And what's ridiculous is it cost about 75 bucks in Germany <laughs> when Paul got it, because it was a very cheap, inexpensive bass, and now they all cost a lot of money because they remind us of Paul. This would be the Gretsch Duo Jet if it was a Gretsch. 
It's actually a Dillian model. It's a company called Dillian Guitars that makes a lot of reissues of pretty much everything. It spoofs on everybody. And they make really great, great copies. So then I just had the Duosonic pickups put in, so it really sounds like a Duojet. And it was a nice, inexpensive way to get a Gretsch. This is also the Icon George guitar thing in the Beatles rock band. <laughs> This is a fun little Dillian copy as well. This is the John guitar, which is also the rock band John guitar thing that's going to be in the rock band controller. This one, of course, isn't a controller, it's just a regular guitar. But uh, great, great fun John guitar here. I love this Dillian too because this is the George Hard Day's Night. Rickenbacker, but again, it's a Dillian copy, and um, it's not a 12 string, it's a 6 string version, but it's more useful to me as a 6 string. And it, they both really sound like Rickenbackers, that previous John one and this one, so it's a nice and expensive way to get Rickenbackers. Thank you, Dillian. Now, I never knew that George didn't like the sound of his Gretches, so I just think that part's hilarious because we all wanted to sound like the Beatles and sound, and get the Gretsch sound. <laughs> and he was making do with what he had. But this is probably my favorite Gretsch. It's because it's not too big for me. It's the uh, Country Classic Junior. And um, it's just got a great size neck and everything. And when the Gretsch company asked me to write an essay on Gretsch guitars, I went on this little thing about George and Dre Gretsch as being synonymous and loving both of them, you know, but here it was, George didn't even like the sound of a Gretsch. <laughs> I'm sad. This is my very first electric guitar ever. This is a 1961 Gretsch anniversary model. And um, still sounds great, still sounds like a really cool Gretsch. A little bigger than the other one, obviously. But, um, it's got nothing to do with the Beatles, but it's good Gretsch. Yeah, you know, the thing is, I bet George liked the sound of Gretsch's, but they didn't sound like Fender's. So when you really want a Strat, nothing's going to sound like a Strat, but a Strat, <laughs> unless it's a Line 6. It's uh, John looking at the phone casino for Musician's Friend about two years ago. It's pretty big, but it's thin, so it's nice that way. It does still have all the finish on it, so it's not his actual model that they reissued. That would have been too expensive, but I actually got this before they reissued it, and it's a really nice rooftop guitar. Um, sounds great. Rising sun, when the place it's coming from is inside 